So now, if I talk about specific sectors that might get affected in India because of this, I mean, since last three days, we have seen shares of some pharma companies, some IT companies, which have been operating out of Israel, some new energy companies, sports. The shares of these companies have seen turbulence. Now, do you think this is more of a knee-jerk reaction uh, by the Indian equity uh, holders? Or do you think that this is likely to sustain for some time? So, Abhinav, again, looking back at my own experience uh, during the uh, Hezbollah-Lebanon uh, war, uh, literally almost six months or nine months later is when uh, Sun Pharma uh, made the Taro acquisition. So, in some ways, uh, a crisis is uh, never based a good crisis, uh, as, as the saying goes. And we'll be able to hear. Uh, I, uh, so, uh, I remember reaching out to Dilip Sanghuri just after the announcement. I congratulated him. And this was just about six, nine months after the uh, attack uh, by Hezbollah. So, business sort of continued when they made the acquisition of, of, of uh, uh, Taro uh, at, that, at that point in time. Uh, okay. I think uh, I, I don't anticipate any significant. I mean, again, if you look at the sectors, uh, most of them are whether it be pharma, agri, uh, defense, um, software. Uh, and again, it's more a people uh, intensive businesses than product intensive uh, in that sense. So the only impact would potentially be that if people are not able to get to office in, uh, like we had in India uh, during the corona crisis. Uh, other than that, the product movement, I don't anticipate any significant uh, uh, impact. Okay. Okay. Now, crude oil prices is a different subject, uh, Ajay Saab. You know, the bone of contention which has been there with all the economies is the high interest rates. You know, which started in early 2022. Now, this is a problem which most of the business leaders, they have voiced their concerns on. Now, this war again has probably pushed that deadline, you know, when we'll be back to low interest rates. Do you think high interest rates will be a big problem for all the businesses and especially in the Indian context? So again, I'm not sure that that's necessarily linked uh, to this particular conflict. I mean, it's a broader question. And for sure, uh, it is. it will have and will continue to have uh, some impact. But for example, if you look at the U.S. right now, uh, despite interest rates uh, being uh, relatively high, uh, the business continues to, the business environment continues to be reasonably positive. Uh, so again, I think in many ways, companies, again, I speak from my own company's experience, uh, you know, have means... I mean, it might impact some of your inventories and receivables and, uh, uh, you know, uh, other than that. But again, he, I, I don't see that as having, again, unless it prolongs for an extended period of time. In the short haul, I don't anticipate it to have a significant impact uh, on on operations. Companies are already taking steps to uh, respond to them. Uh, and again, we have got your use. This kind of situation that really eight ten years that uh, the city uh, associated with it. and it's not as if we have kind of this kind of environment in the past. Now, when I talk about you know the Middle East crisis and overall crisis the world is going through, uh, it is rightly said that any war these days is direct war on the middle class of the world. I mean, we have seen how because of the Russia-Ukraine crisis. The prices of food went high for the common man. It's the common man who suffers in the end. So if I talk about the middle class, and especially the middle class, which is dependent on Israel, or Israel operating in companies, working in companies, which are directly involved with Israel, do you think in long term, any impact on their forward, maybe six months from now? I mean, it's a long term guess, but do you think any, uh, any influence on their lives? Apart from so, the physical, uh, uh, yeah. So again, if you look at the nature of the Indo-Israeli cooperation or the business uh, environment, it's largely in the tech space. Uh, you know, so it is sort of a very a high. It's a, it's a sort of a high tech. Uh, yeah, it's not the traditional MSME type of uh, uh, environment that you would encounter. This is a fairly top of the line sort of uh, 
very sort of uh, high tech uh, cooperation. So I don't visualize that that segment uh, is likely to be as impacted because again, it's largely people intensive. It's not so much product intensive uh, in that sense. And it is uh, a, a very specialized uh, nature of uh, uh, segments that we play in. It's not sort of the mass market uh, cooperation uh, between India and Israel. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Now, uh, what, what, what a lot of people would want to know uh, the mindset of the Israeli administration and government these days when they are facing a crisis like this and how does it influence their trade partners in this context, India? So, would you want to throw some light on uh, on this situation? Like, how do the, the government and Israeli administration think during these times and uh, considering trade relations we have with Israel? So, for sure, uh, based on my own experience, uh, uh, the whole uh, administration becomes very focused on resolving the immediate uh, conflict. Uh, you know, other things sort of take a secondary sort of a backseat. Uh, the priority still is in, in ensuring that this doesn't drag on. Uh, but again, in the short term, they will be 100% focused uh, on resolving the issue uh, and other things will tend to take a, a backseat. Uh, but again, I keep coming back to the point that uh, they, they, they have been quite used to dealing with these kind of environments for, for decades. Uh, and uh, in many ways, it's, I, I can't say business as usual, uh, but uh, they try to ensure that the disruption is, is minimized, though their priorities and their focus does shift. Okay, I think I lost you. Okay, fine. Now, if I sum it up, uh, Ajay Sab, crude oil prices, high interest rates, and maybe, you know, inflation. These three are the prime concerns and they have been rightly pointed out uh, uh, as we have learned from the past. Do you think if this war enhances, if this war, the longevity of the war continues, which will be the most dangerous factor which might impact India in the coming few months? Will it be crude oil prices? Will it be high interest rates or will it be inflation, which can stem out from this war? So again, given the, the quantum or the volume of trade and business, it's relatively minuscule in the big scheme of things. Uh, you know, it's not in uh, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars or trillions of dollars. You know, it's, in, it's, a, it's a relatively uh, small, very niche uh, 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 and very specific to a specific segment. Uh, so, in that sense, unless situations like uh, Saudi are getting roped in, for example, or, or Iran getting roped in, if those kinds of uh, dynamics play out, uh, then obviously there would be uh, implications. But thus far, it does not appear to be that uh, that's likely to happen. But certainly, as I said, if uh, Saudi and uh, gets dragged into this and uh, Hmm. Then there might be some implication. Uh, sure, so everything depends on five Islam. Sure, so everything depends on more people getting involved, Saudi and the Iran factions getting involved. Sure, fair point. Uh, last question, uh, Ajay Saab, you know, when it comes to global growth, we now are seeing two ongoing wars and few proxy wars. The business world has become more fragmented. There have been more trade restrictions. We have seen China versus US as far as business war is concerned, trade war is concerned. We are seeing uh, devaluing of currencies across the globe. How do you see the business community moving forward from here? I mean, we are living in a highly fragmented and highly polarized world as of now. Where do you see things going from here as far as businesses and trade are concerned? So my biggest uh, fear, uh, again, I have spent all my life with one of the world's largest uh, uh, multinationals and we operate in 80 countries across the world. And uh, so I think the, the biggest problem that I see is twofold. One is I think we are seeing a lot of uh, nationalistic, uh, you know, the deglobalization taking place, where to me that is, if that con continues, uh, where, you know, it's my interest first before the world's interest. Uh, and I think this uh, this uh, deglobalization trend where countries are going into their shell 
uh, and you're seeing this in the political arena, even in the Western world, uh, where there is a backlash uh, on. Uh, so I think the two trends that I think are the one trend that I think will be definitely impacting uh, going forward is this growing uh, focus on big globalization and and companies uh, countries. Uh, uh, starting to say that uh, you know we got to look after our interests uh, in the short term uh, uh, everything else be damned uh, so I think that that is probably the number one challenge is that how do we get the world to start talking to each other and and start uh, um, operating as as a united uh, entity and not go into our uh, into our own uh, shell to me that's the number one challenge uh, that we're going to see uh, going forward for uh, global businesses. Okay. Any other challenge apart from that? Well, again, I think you are in this supply chain challenge pre-corona. Many countries and companies started already recognizing that, listen, we cannot be dependent on a single source of supply. Uh, so even in my own company, for example, it was very critical that we always had uh, multi-source uh, products. Uh, the, all our RMs that were coming in would be from dual sourcing. Uh, so I think the fact that we already encountered a situation where uh, supply chains were starting to, people started realizing that you cannot have a, a high dependency on, uh, on a single source of supplier uh, has made us less vulnerable uh, going forward. Uh, most companies that I know of have sort of a plan B uh, in terms of uh, sourcing uh, inputs. Uh, so I, again, I don't see that as being as, if this had happened maybe 10 years ago, it might have been hugely problematic. But I think in some ways we have uh, uh, learned to, to manage that and live with that. Sure. Uh, Ajay sir, thank you so much for time, for your time and joining us in Live Mint. This was really insightful. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, Abhinav, and uh, I think we all keep our fingers crossed that things will resolve.